Hey, good evening, everybody. How are you guys doing? <clears throat> Thank you guys for tuning in tonight. Um, I got an, here's another episode of the Dental Advocate. I'm your host, Trinidad Mora, and I have an amazing guest for you guys tonight. Um, he teaches, he lectures all around the world uh, about the All on Four, and he was also voted uh, best in USA by his peers. So uh, I present to you guys Dr. Saj Jivraj. Welcome, doctor. Good evening. I'm uh, glad to be here. And you also go by Dr. J, right? Dr. J. Everybody Dr. remembers J. that one. All right, all right. It's a pleasure. Um, so, so tell us, doc, what do you do exactly on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, and, and I'm asking, you know, as a, as a dental assistant because I, I don't actually know too many dental assistants that work with prosthodontists. Obviously, there are, but I personally don't talk to any on a day-to-day -day basis that all uh, right so well, what I will tell you is we just try to help people um, as best as we can um, we maintain a, a very high standard um, not just for myself you know for patients and then also for our dental assistants our dental assistants are extremely well trained um, we literally put them through a boot camp and <laughs> Ultimately, it's about the patient. It's yeah. about delivering quality of care, which they're happy with, and it lasts a long time. Yeah, that's awesome. That's very, very awesome. Um, so tell us, how'd you, how'd you get here, and why, really? You know, I, I'm from London. Um, I went to dental school in Manchester, and I went into private practice, and just like any young dentist, you know, I thought I knew everything. <laughs> and I found out very quickly um, what I didn't know. Um, and that lack of control used to bother me every time I used to go home. And I really wanted to learn more and more and more. So, you know, I, I, I loved, you know, cosmetics, dental implants and yeah. what have you. Um, and I wanted to do prosthodontics because that was the specialty um, in that. And I was fortunate mm. enough to be you know, accepted at um, the Herman Ostro USC School of Dentistry, um, where I finished, you know, prosthodontics mm. for three years. Um, and, you know, it's, it's one of those branches of dentistry where there's no, no patient is the same. You know, every patient is a different challenge, you know, for example, and not, um, I'm not trying to say that other specialties are the same, but you know, if you're taking teeth out, you know, you're taking teeth out. If you are doing root canals, you're doing root canals. Correct. Yeah. Um, as a prosthodontist, we are, we are quarterbacking the whole team. Um, and we are planning the treatment and then we are outsourcing various aspects of that mm -hmm. treatment. So each patient has different requirements. Um, no two patients can look the same. So the artistic side of it really, really is a passion for me. Now, I've also heard that you guys get referred patients that are like, some dentists or some other specialties don't know what to do with. Okay. So you get the you get the people that are already in trouble, right? You know, we we do see a a number of patients that are referred from other practitioners. Uh, you know, sometimes, you know, practitioners need, you know, a second set of eyes on something, um, and you know, we just try to help them as much as we can. We work with other specialists also. Um, and as I said, we, we want to, we stick to our specialty to ensure that the patient is getting the best from us. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Um, how many assistants do you work with? Either, um, I, I know, you know, the whole COVID uh, thing that's going on, but um, so things have probably changed for you, or have they? No, th things <coughs> have changed for us. Um, we have, before, you know, COVID hit all of us, we had five dental assistants. Mm -hmm. um, and there was myself, we have a couple of hygienists, um, and they were busy. We have a practice with eight rooms, um, and we, we were able to see, you know, three, four patients at a time. They're not all in treatment, um, but at any one time, um, I do need two assistants working with me at the same time. So we next, can- Next to the patient. Yeah, because and the only reason for that is you know, the reality is that patients don't like sit, sitting in the chair and we want to try and be as efficient as possible. So if you know, sometimes when you have one assistant um, and you forget something, oh, go and get that. It kind of wastes time. So yeah, yeah. Um, we want to try and you know, make it efficient so that the patient can get out of the chair as soon as possible. Good, good. Um, 
So what are your expectations of a demo system when they work next to you with, with the Pixel? Okay, so I will say outright that I can't do anything that I do without a, a well-trained dental assistant. And I truly mean that. Um, dental assistants are, it's my right hand. Um, we spend a lot of time training, training, and more training. To the point I would be confident enough to say that a lot of my dental assistants, they, they can perform procedures which are, you know, I've taught at dental school level, we've taught dental students, they do an amazing job, amazing job. And dental, they're the core of my team. Do you, do you teach them like the stuff you teach at your lectures? You know what I do? Um, I'm quite, I expect high standards from them. And it's quite funny because it, it, it goes around in a circle. So for example, when I'm doing a prep um, and say we do an intraoral scan and we scan the prep, um, I think that I'm done and my dental assistant will say, hey doc, don't, don't you think that area needs to be smoothed a little bit? <laughs> yeah. And I have no problem with that yeah. because I know what their eyes are trained to see. Yeah. So I have no problems. I get back in there and it makes me better too. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. Um, you know, I've, I've never worked at a trust dentist office and I don't know anyone that can give me any stories, but I would imagine that you would have to, you know, train people rigorously on, on the things that you do, especially because you're, you're putting people to sleep and, you know, experience. You, you know what? It, it has to be efficient. When we get referred or when a patient comes from another dental practice, they're expecting something extra. Um, and it's not just the clinical work, it's the way the patient is managed, the way my dental assistant talks to them. Um, patients are much more comfortable with our dental auxiliaries. You know, sometimes you may tell my assistant something which they wouldn't necessarily tell me. Um, so, you know, my team is everything. Um, and I, I really mean that I couldn't do anything I do without my team. Yeah, that's, that's good. It sounds like uh, you really have that appreciation for your dental assistants and a lot of dental assistants look for that. No, for sure, <clears throat> for sure. As yeah, I said, yeah. can't do anything without them. So, yeah. now I know you also, um, you know, as I mentioned earlier, you lecture and you teach in several different places. Um, what are some of the places that you've gone to in the last year? All right. So, <coughs> last year, uh, this last year, we've been, you know, around the states, Canada, uh, Malaysia, India, um, Dubai, London. Um, and we have, you know, teaching programs in, you know, various parts of the world. And it's fun because as well as going there to teach, I'm also learning something. You know, it could be I go to London and there's a dentist in the audience who does something totally different from me. And, you know, I'm all ears. And wherever I can pick up a tip here and there, yeah. anything that can make me that little bit better, I look forward to it. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I, I, I would think that's a very fun thing to do. It is. It, it's a lot of fun. You get to meet a lot of nice people. Um, one of the other things I wanted to ask you was, now with everything that's going on, what do you see yourself or as an office in, in five years? All right. So our plan and our vision has still stayed the same. You know, um, there's always going to be something which is going to disrupt things. Um, and it's a it's a serious situation right now, um, but w we shouldn't get too focused on it. You know, we're going to come back from this. Everybody's going to come back from this. The reality is that people still need their teeth fixed. People are still going to have some problems. I think while they're sitting at home in quarantine and those patients who can't you know eat or chew or do anything, the things we get most joy out of while we're sitting at home really is you know being able to eat what you want and smiling and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so yeah. our mission statement is still going to say the same, to treat patients well, um, improve the quality of life, improve their confidence, give them the smile they're looking for. And all of these things are still going to be here in five years. So we're going to spend a lot of time on treating people well. Yeah, well, that's definitely. I, I don't think uh, that's going to go away. As yes. long as we keep growing teeth, uh, <laughs> I think we'll always be around. Um, one of the other things is... I know that there are several offices that are either confused or don't have all the information as to what to do to open back up. What are some of the things that you're doing to uh, prepare 
for that? All right. So first and foremost, patient safety is going to be key. Um, until we have a vaccine, um, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be difficult for patients to return to the practice. But the reality is that they're going, they're going to have to because mm -hmm. they're going to need certain things addressed. Mm -hmm. So little things that we're doing, obviously a very clean practice. We're maintaining our social distancing. We have extra oral suction units um, in place mm -hmm. for aerosols. We have HEPA-13 air purifiers, which mm -hmm. are going to um, ensure, um, well, they're going to clean the air and yeah. hopefully, you know, clean yeah. for viruses. We're going to ensure adequate PPE, face masks and what have you for yeah. all of our team. Make sure that our patients, you know, are rinsing and peroxide mouthwash. Um, we're going to try and do everything possible to keep patients safe, staff safe, mm -hmm. um, and obviously me and my family safe. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I know uh, some offices are having the patients way out from the car, they get called in. Yeah, exactly what we do. They, yeah. they come to the office, they sit in the parking lot, they call us and we bring them in one by one. The, the, the good news is that we have, a, <clears throat> we have a big office. So to maintain social distancing here is going to be quite easy. And we have eight operatories which are spread apart. So okay. um, we're going to be able to see a few patients. Very cool. um, I do have some questions um, from my, my circle uh, on Instagram. Yes, yes, I and saw some of them. I was looking forward to them. Yes, yes. <laughs> so I do want to send a shout out to uh, my circle on Instagram, which is uh, dental vibe 17 uh, assistant Becky and the dental assistant life. I know you guys are uh, gonna watch this So I just want to say what's up and thank you guys for always uh, supporting us As Assistant Becky had some good questions. Yeah, she, yeah. she just she's always just blowing up. No, fantastic. That's I mean, great news. You get her started. She, she, she goes <laughs> So, you know, uh, for those of you that are watching give these ladies a, a follow they are they've got some really cool funny memes on their stuff they got some good information that has to do with everything dental assistant so check them out and i believe also uh dental vibes 17 is having a giveaway right now uh it is a giveaway for a toothpaste called twice so if you guys uh love some new toothpaste if you guys haven't heard of it check it out and uh maybe you'll get it for free so let's move on here to the next question. So, you know, Becky really wants to know what was the most complicated procedure you performed and why? All right, so as far as complicated procedures, most of the procedures we do are quite complex. Now, complex and, you know, something which is really satisfying, you know, sometimes are a little bit different. So everything is a challenge um, because that's what we do. Now, one of the patients I can distinctly remember that we treated was a, a gentleman by the name of Eric. Um, he was suffering from Down syndrome. Um, and his dream was to be able to eat a torta. I, I hope I said that right. Um, and he just wasn't able to, to chew, eat. He has lost his teeth. Um, his mother had taken him to several places. Um, and nobody would, would treat him. Um, because he he wasn't very easy to treat. Seeing that, he came in the chair. I got on very well with him, um, and unfortunately for him, we'd had to remove you know several of his teeth, um, and we placed dental implants and we gave him teeth. And when we put his final teeth in, my my whole team were around him, and it was towards lunchtime, and they bought him a torta. Oh so they gosh. gave it to him and if you could see you know how like it's on our Instagram page um, Anna Kappa Dental AI um, the way he ate that torta it was it was amazing some <laughs> of my assistants were crying they're like you wow. know they couldn't believe that he was like he'd been looking so forward to that so I would say that really stand out stands out for me yeah that's that sounds amazing yeah. I, I think that's got to be one of the best times um, or by moments, I should say, in dentistry when you have that aha moment, that, that like amazing moment of giving somebody, you know, that happiness uh, oh, or it, even confidence. It totally you know? changed his quality of life. Yeah. Totally. Like his mother, you know, now we finished his care. She just comes in and you know, she drops us off, you know, gifts and say, listen, we, it's okay. We don't need, but she just wants to come in and, you know, he's, he was a great guy. Great kid. All right. So... 
If you could choose any other specialty, what would it be and why? All right. If I was to choose a specialty, um, I would choose oral and maxillofacial surgery. And the reality is that when I first finished dental school, that's what I wanted to do. Um, but when I was in the UK, it would have taken me maybe about 15 years to do the specialty. Wow. And 15 years was too long. I wanted to have <laughs> a family life also. Um, and But the surgical aspect is always intriguing. And it wouldn't be teeth and implants and bone grafting. It would be more facial trauma, cancer surgeries, mm -hmm. stuff like that. That's yeah. the stuff that intrigued me. I remember my last year in dental school, um, I shadowed an oral and maxillofacial surgeon and we were in the operating theater literally for like seven hours. He was doing a radical neck dissection. And for me, that was amazing, you oh, know, how, really how he was doing it. <laughs> what it is, a patient had head and neck cancer and they literally, you know, cut open everything and removing cancer, removing, you know, lymph nodes and what have you. It was amazing. Yeah, you have a question from yeah. Becky. So Becky. <laughs> Assistant Becky. Hi, yeah, Assistant she's Becky. She's showing up again. <laughs> she shows up everywhere. I love her. All right. So it says, do you do sedation? If so, do you do all types of sedation? Okay. So we have several options for patients. You know, there are some patients who are just a little bit nervous, in which case we do oral conscious sedation. Um, there are some patients who just absolutely cannot, you know, tolerate being at the dentist. In those types of situations, we bring in an anesthesiologist and the anesthesiologist may just do simple IV light sedation or they may actually do full, you know, anesthesia where the patient is knocked out and we get as much work done for that patient as possible. So by the time they wake up, pretty much everything's done. How, how long do these uh, surgeries usually go? You know, it, it depends what we're doing. Um, usually three to four hours, mm. three to four hours. And as I said, working with two assistants, we, we try to make that time very that, efficient. That sounds pretty efficient because <clears throat> I've seen two other surgeries and they went well into the six hour period. Yeah. yeah. Depending on the complexity, as I said, once again, it's all about um, organization, knowing what you're going to do ahead of time beginning with the end in mind, knowing what the end result's going to be, and you can move quicker. Yeah, and having those assistance. <laughs> yes, yes, that's for sure. Uh, what is the biggest hurdle you face in your specialty as a prosthodontist? Okay, the biggest hurdle I face um, is actually patients knowing that we exist, to be honest with you. Um, I don't think, you know, during the residency or the clinical work is a, is a problem, but I think educating patients in regards to what prosthodontists do you know only two percent of dentists in the world are prosthodontists um, and if you ask a patient they know what a periodontist is they know what an orthodontist is mm -hmm. if they say what's a prosthodontist they look at you like well, i don't know mm -hmm. so it's the patient education part which yeah. is is the hurdle yeah yeah I, I i gotta say even with dental assistants i mean i've been doing this a pretty long time and like I said, I, I don't know very many that I communicate with that actually work for prosthodontists. Yep. It's usually a, a general dentist. So, yeah, even even maybe in the... Uh, in and you're an RDAEF too, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think we need more prosthodontists. <laughs> you know, I think it's, it's... For prosthodontists, you really have to love the end result. And it takes uh, a long time to get there sometimes. Um, and you are married to the patient. And what I mean by that is you are responsible for the end result. So say for example, you're working with an oral surgeon mm -hmm. and say the surgeon places the implants. The teeth are gonna be done by the prosthodontist. So if a mm -hmm. tooth breaks, the patient has a problem, patients aren't going back to the oral surgeon. They're coming back to the, to the prosthodontist and mm -hmm. you gotta want to have that relationship. Yeah, 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 very, very important to have yeah. that. So, do you allow your extended function of dental assistant to perform the duties they were trained to do? It says, this is from Becky also, actually. I know a lot of dentists... It, is Becky extended functions too? Um, yes. Okay. Yeah. It says, I know a lot of dentists won't even allow the assistants that are trained and certified to do those procedures. If you do, what is your requirement on allowing them to do so? 
All right, so that's a, that's a great, great question. So what I will say is my dental assistants do a lot of procedures, um, but I will tell you even the very skilled one, it took me almost about a year to allow her to make a provisional. And it's not that I didn't trust her, it's my signature goes on the provisional. So we had to make sure it was so high level. So what can my assistants do? They can put rubber dam on like there's no tomorrow. If you wanted to isolate two to 14, they can do that. They can make most amazing provisionals, amazing scans, amazing you know impressions. They you know help me. They do a lot of things. Like even from a laboratory perspective, when we are doing a full arch implant reconstruction, before I used to have laboratory technicians come over and do conversions, like do an all on four prosthesis. Mm. Today, my assistants do that. Wow. So am I willing to be able to, am I, would I allow me? Absolutely. You know, at the end of the day, when you are a dental assistant, it's, it's going to be about growth opportunities. What can you do? to get to that next level. How can you become better? Um, and there are some dental assistants that are extremely passionate about what they do and they really want to get to that next level. You strike me as one of those. Um, but there are some that just want to have an eight to five and easy life and go home. Um, and we work with those that are passionate. Now, just to be clear on what a conversion is for those that may not know, I just want um, you to explain what that is. So sure. That uh, for, to me, it's wow because I have seen some of them online, and it's usually done by the prosthodontist. So, so, so essentially, what it is, um, you must have heard in the media, teeth in one day. And essentially, what that is is when a patient has their teeth removed, dental implants are placed the same day the teeth are removed, and then what we do is we fit teeth to those implants. Right? Usually, a dental technician is involved. Um, I would say 99.9% .9 of places and dental technicians do a great job. Um, I have three dental technicians who work with me um, at our dental lab. However, um, one of my assistants, Laura, was very interested in the procedure um, and she really excelled at it. And I would, I would tell you should go toe to toe with any dental technician today um, in making those teeth. That is awesome. let, let me give a shout out. Hi, hey, Laura. <laughs> Laura, you're a lucky girl. All right. So, uh, you know, Dr. J, is there anything else that you want to let everybody know about prosthodontists? Um, I would just say that, you know, we, we provide a service. It may be a little bit different. It may take a little bit longer, um, but you will get, you won't get what you're looking for. You're going to get more than what you're looking for. And we warranty what we do. And I think that's quite important because, you know, today dental treatment is costly um, and patients want to know that it's going to work yeah, um, and we stand behind what we do. Well, I know that you uh, have this book right here with your name on it. Yeah. Uh, when was that published? So this was published in 2018. Um, this is a compilation of the last, I'd say, 14 years of work. Um, wow. I've been fortunate enough to collaborate with people uh, globally. Um, there have been experts in the field who've written certain chapters for me. Um, but it was it was nice taking on the project. And when you're writing, you find out very quickly how much you don't know. Wow. Um, so it really forced me to get back to things and really figure out how can we simplify things so people will understand it. And um, there have been over 15,000 sales, um, which has been great. Um, and it's been a great resource for dentists. And I'm sure many patients have been helped. Well, I so I was, say, I was quite pleased. Um, your, your field of, of dentistry sounds very exciting. It is. It's, I love it. <laughs> it, sounds, it sounds like uh, it's, it's, it's very fun and very rewarding for both you and the assistant, actually. Well, um, thank you for, for letting us do the show here in your facility, Doc. I no, really our pleasure. I appreciate it. No, thank, thank you for your time. Thank you, Trent. I'd, um, I'd really appreciate it. coming on. I, I appreciate it. Thank you. And I want to thank everybody watching. Thank you guys for tuning in. Um, remember to tag all your IG friends and all your Facebook friends. I'm going to load this video on my YouTube so you guys will be, have uh, quick access to it. And it'll also be on my Facebook. And thank you very much, Silly Panda Media, again for making this happen. Uh, I really appreciate that. 
And yeah, that's it, man. You guys, thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. And just remember, um, keep it positive, and I hope your section never fails you. <laughs> Peace.